What's up everyone? This is Samson with Electric Bike Journal and I'm here to talk about the Aventon Pace 500. This is a class three pedal assist bike with pedal assist up to 28 miles per hour and a thumb throttle that will get you up to 20 miles per hour. It has a 614 watt hour integrated battery into the frame and that powers the 500 watt rear hub motor. It has a cadence and a speed sensor. The cadence sensor will detect when you are pedaling the bike and activate the motor. And the speed sensor is there to tell you how fast you're going. It has a color display, which displays your speed, battery percentage, pedal assist level, odometer, and much, much more. Out of the box, this bike is set up as a class two bike. So you have to connect it to the app to unlock it to a class three bike, which will get you up to 28 mile per hour pedal assist. The app is cool as well because you can check out the same stats that are on the computer. You can also post to their social channel that they've built and you can also record rides. On the left hand side of the bars, you have the thumb controller and that is where you can change your pedal assist mode, toggle through the different information screens and even control the headlights that are integrated onto this bike. This bike does come with an integrated headlight and a tail light. When the lights are off, the rear lights act as a brake light when you hit the brakes. And when the lights are on, the rear lights are constantly on. Right under the thumb controller is where you're gonna find your throttle and that is what you can use instead of pedaling. It comes with an adjustable stem so you can raise or lower that stem to find the perfect comfort level for your ride. The bike is specced with 27.5 inch wheels and those have 2.2 inch puncture resistant e-bike rated tires, which also have a reflective sidewall. The bike is equipped with hydraulic disc brakes with 180 millimeter rotors front and rear. This is an eight speed bike and you have your thumb shifters on the right hand side of the handlebar. It also has mounting options for fenders or racks and those are optional to purchase from their website. Estimated range on this bike is 47 miles in pedal assist one and 24 miles in pedal assist five. This is all gonna depend varying on rider weight, the terrain and riding style, and how much thumb throttle you're gonna wanna use. This bike comes in weighing 52 pounds, and there is also a step-through model available to make it more accessible to everyone. And the Aventon Pace 500 comes with a price of $1,699. Let's take you through a ride to give you a little run through of the modes and to give you a little bit of an on-bike experience. Out here on the Aventon Pace 500, give you a little on-bike experience, run through some of the pedal modes. Right now I'm just on the flats. Pedal says zero. Pedal's pretty good. The wheel spec of 27 and a half inch wheels and 2.2 inch tires, they're pretty efficient even if you do, don't have any pedal assist on. So if you did run out of battery, you still would be able to get around. It's a little heavy, but you got eight gears. Right now I'm in just the middle range of pedaling, no, no issues. But we're on an electric bike. We wanna see how this works with the motor. Getting the pedal assist one, definitely keeps you cruising at a much better pace. All right, pedal assist one. Just up from the stop, it it's, gets you going around 10 miles an hour with an uphill. I have noticed that this cadence sensor does kick in a little later. You get about a half to one pedal and then the motor will kick on. So pedal assist one pretty much gets us to around 10, 11 miles an hour. We'll kick into two. You can really feel the motor kick in. Got to click up a few gears, gets us to 15 at keeping a nice cadence. Let's head into three. All right, three, we're getting some speed. We've gotta get our pedaling up a little bit, just if we wanna keep our legs spinning. But three, 19.9, just 20 miles an hour if we're giving it a little more pedal, pedal action with our own power. But yeah, the cadence kicks in, just takes about half a pedal. Let's get to four. This is not a steep road, so we'll see how quick it can get us up. All right, from a stop, start in pedal assist four. That gets you up to 25 miles an hour. 26. We are on a downhill though. So this bike does roll efficiently like we talked about. So. 26 and four on a slight downhill is pretty great. Let's get this into five. With that boost in five, 
pushed us to 28 and gave us that momentum to help us cruise close to 30 miles per hour. So five, you really get that boost and you can go fast. I did notice when you do go to five and you really are pushing it, you definitely see that battery drain a bit. But if you wanna go somewhere fast, five is the way to go. Let's see how it feels going uphill. So just in one right now, starting to go on a decent uphill. One, we're getting a little boost. You can hear the motor a little bit. Gonna be just about 10 miles per hour. So we'll get into two. Two, you feel it. The second you hit into two, you feel the motor activate. And on this hill, that would be taking us to 14, 15 miles an hour. So let's click into three. Three, we gotta click up a little bit if we wanna continue pedaling. Three, easily 19, 20 miles an hour about. Get back into four. Once again, this is going uphill on a fairly steep hill. If you put in some pedal power yourself, four will continuously keep you at 20 on a pretty good uphill. And we're gonna shoot back downhill. See how that takes us. This bike handles well at speed. We are going downhill at 27 miles per hour and it doesn't feel, doesn't feel wobbly or shaky. I can turn still, go over speed bumps. It is stable, which is what you want when you are at speed. All right, this has hydraulic disc brakes. Gets you to a nice stop. All right, here's what's nice about the throttle is started in the wrong gear. So I use that throttle to get some momentum going. And then we can start to pedal again. Get back into the right gear. Get back going uphill. This is another steep hill. And it is nice to pedal uphill on this bike. The throttle on a steeper hill pretty much keeps you a little bit above 10 miles an hour. But if you're going to five, get a nice cadence going. You can hit 15. And that is solid for a steep hill. Look at that, back in five. Motor kicks in when we're on a little bit more of a flat area. Straight over to 20 miles an hour. On these downhills, this, this bike Rolls very smooth. It weighs. So we're gonna go down this hill, see what top speed we can get. And I think we can hit over 30 miles an hour. So we're using that pedal assist, got us a 28. And right away, we're already hitting 30 miles an hour. Just going downhill, handles very nicely, smooth, don't get any shakes or anything like that. That's over 32, and we will slow down before we get to this turn. But once again, these hydraulic disc brakes stop us nicely, and we can go back to a more mellow speed. But we're gonna get to a stop sign onto a busier street. We can see how this thing gets up to speed. Here we go. Use that throttle to get going. That's one, we wanna go faster, so push it up to three. That will get us to 19, 20 miles an hour. Let's go into four. Get a harder gear so we can pedal better. That's gonna get us to 24. All right, let's push it into five and get this thing to its max 
speed of 28 if we can. This is a quick bike, so you can catch up with the speed of traffic pretty well when you need to. On this uphill, 27 and a half. And we got there quick. This is one of the faster accelerating bikes that we have. And it feels really nice when you want to go fast, go pick up those burritos, get back home and enjoy it. After having this bike for a while, we have come up with a conclusion of what we like and don't like about the bike and who we think this bike would be good for. First off, we think this is a great looking bike from the overall outline of the bike to the paint finish to all the little events and branded pieces. This is a nice looking bike. The battery is very nicely integrated into the frame and it is removable to charge on or off the bike. The adjustability of this bike is also very convenient from the quick release adjustable seat post to the adjustable stem. This bike can fit a wide variety of people and adjust to be very comfortable for their needs. The upright seated position is also very comfortable and with those swept back handlebars, you can really cruise in comfort. The integrated headlights are super awesome to have. The headlight is nice and bright and having those rear lights are awesome in the day or the night. The color display is large and nice and easy to read and it has a lot of information that you can access. The bike pedals pretty easily without any pedal assist. The wheel and the tire spec help this bike roll nice and efficiently down the road. It is also very nice to have that throttle. It is super nice to get started when you're at a stop sign. And if you just want to take a little break, you can use that thumb throttle to keep you going. Here are some things that we don't like about the bike. The cadence sensor has a bit of a lag to it. It takes about half of a pedal before it kicks in. And when it does kick in, depending on what pedal assist you're in, it can really jolt you forward. To counteract this, when I would get to a stop, I would lower the bike into a lower pedal assist level and then start from there and work my way up in the different pedal assist levels to get to the speed that I wanted to be at. The fast acceleration of this motor does make this bike very quick and that is fun for people that are comfortable on fast bikes, but for people that are less comfortable on bikes, this could be a little bit intimidating for them. This bike does not come with fenders or a rack, but there are mounting points on the bikes, so it is an optional thing that you can purchase afterwards. Who do we think this bike would be good for? This is an awesome, comfortable cruiser and a great city bike. If you are looking for a bike that has a lot of adjustments and comfort from the seat to the handlebars, this bike will fit a wide variety of people and you'll really be comfortable riding it. This would also be a good bike for someone who is looking for a bike to commute on. It has a good range and the comfortable position will get you to work and back very comfortably. If you add a front or a rear rack, you would be able to put your backpack or a bag there and then you don't have to worry about carrying a backpack on your shoulders. If you also added a rear rack to this with a basket, this would also be an awesome bike to go to the grocery store or just run some errands on. You are able to remove the battery, so if you need to go up some stairs, you can remove that battery and you don't have to bring that bike with you to charge it. Coming in at 52 pounds, this is not a light bike, but it is also not a heavy bike. If you have a means of bringing this bike with you in your car or truck, this will be an awesome bike to bring with you on a weekend getaway. You can park your car where you are staying and ride around town on this bike. Thanks for watching this video and we hope you enjoyed this review on the Event and Pace 500. If you have any questions about the bike, leave a comment below and we can answer them for you. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we have a lot of reviews just like this coming up. We also have some videos on some e-bike maintenance and some tips to upgrade your e-bike. We also still have a giveaway going on. We are giving away an Aventon Adventure bike. Once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we will give away that bike. All you have to do is head to that video, comment on that video, and once we hit 1,000 subscribers, we will pick a winner. We really want to get there to stoke someone out with a bike, so if you can share with your friends, that would be awesome.